So we have established the required equations and let's simply write them down for the sake of convenience. So we have two different sets of equations for the y direction and the x direction. Now, since the x, x direction is the motion under constant velocity, we have vx equals to the change in position in the x direction over the time taken. Now, in the y direction, we have three different equations. V final in the y direction squared equals to V initial in the y direction squared plus two times the acceleration in the y direction times delta x in the y. Also, we have the delta x in the y equals to half the acceleration in the y direction t squared plus V initial in the y direction multiplied by t and V final in the y direction equals to V initial in the y plus acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time. So these are the three equations that we have for motion under constant acceleration and one single equation for the motion under constant velocity. Now we're going to write down the steps that you need to follow in order to solve any projectile motions problem. And in the upcoming video, we're going to have a numerical example problem to help you walk through the steps and apply the concept to actual practice. But in this current video, we're going to just simply go through the um, explanation of projectile motion and highlighting the key important concept that you should know and prepare you for the problem solving part of the lesson. Now, the following steps that you should follow, steps to solve projectile problems. Now, keep in mind, this applies to almost every single projectile motion problem that might, you might come across to. Step number one would be separate the motion into two parts, x direction and the y direction, the same way we have done right here then you're going to write down what is given to you. Write down the given. Have they given you, for example, the time in the, the, time, the time for the motion? Then you can use it in the x direction and you can use it in the y direction, keeping in mind the only connection between the motion in the y and the x is solely time because the object will take the same time to fall down or vertically the same time it will take to fall down, let's say, horizontally. So if we have this tra trajectory, this projectile motion, the object will not re reach the ground. Let's say we have initial velocity V. The object will not reach the ground at two different times, right? So if we have the motion in the X and the motion in the Y, the object will reach the this current state in both the X direction and the Y direction at the same time. So the only only connection that we have between the Y motion and the X motion is time. So this is a simple and important side note to keep in mind. So if you have to write down what is given to you and make sure that they are clearly separated in the X and in the Y directions. Now write down the given. Number three, select the useful equation based on the given so if i'm given information about the vertical or the y direction motion of the projectile motion i'm going to be taking a look at these equations these three equations are going to help me find the unknowns. If I have some information about my motion in the X direction, let's say they give me the horizontal distance till the end point. So I'm going to be leaning towards this equation. So it depends on the question, what is given to you. And the first key step, always separate the motion into two parts, the X and the Y, and write down what is given to you in the X direction and the Y direction. Now, the third step and the final step, you're going to be selecting which equation you're going to use in order to use the provided input to help you find the unknowns. They might give you, for example, the uh, maximum height reached and what is the final velocity required at the top. 
let's say uh, obviously the v final the top is going to be zero in terms of the y direction the vx is going to be constant this could be a trick question or they might give you a specific height which is h in this case and they tell you find the velocity at this current point for example so there are multiple ways multiple ways that the question could be formed however the same steps apply always separate the motion write down what is given to you and select the useful equation to be um, utilized to help you find the unknown requirements in the question um, also on another example they might tell you let's say we have an initial velocity v which is mainly the predominant type where you have v and you have a certain angle given to you theta and you're going to be getting the components the vx and the vy as we have established your initial velocity in the x direction basically is the vertical in the y direction is the vertical component of the velocity and your initial velocity in the x direction is basically the same throughout which is the horizontal component of your velocity and how do you get these velocities we said i give you a trick which is if the angle is trapped between the vector and your axis, that will be the cosine. So in this case, we're going to have V in the X equals to V cosine of theta and V in the Y equals to V sine of theta in this case. So this is some information that you should be able to get in order to add them to the givens in your problem and select the appropriate equation to help you find the unknowns. 